Okay, here's a way of looking at this process at different places on Earth. So we're, we're now going to look at temperate latitudes. So again, take a look at this figure. This is the average kind of light input from December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So through the year, sunlight increasing, decreasing. As sunlight increases and decreases, we see through the year the temperature of the surface water goes up and down. And we see that the level of the thermocline, which is shown here in the dotted line, also changes. So it goes from very deep, this was beneath that 100 meters in the previous figure. It gets shallower as we heat up the surface of the water, surface of the ocean, from March, March April, and May. It gets even shallower in the summer months, June, July, August. And then because of cooling, because it's cooler in the fall, we have a deepening of that thermocline. And you'll recall that I mentioned the depth of the mixed layer. So the depth of the mixed layer is the depth from the surface to the thermocline. So the depth of the mixed layer is getting shallower as we're heating up the ocean and deeper as we're cooling down the ocean. So this is temperate latitude. This is where we live. And we'll come back to this figure in chapter 13 because it's this transition from the very deep mixed layer depth to the shallower mixed layer depths that actually drives productivity in the ocean. Let's look at polar latitudes. In polar latitudes, our sunlight's really focused in on the months, the summer months. We really only have a peak of long days and really 24 hour days and then sunlight gets up into this uh, into these um, hot, more intense only during the summer. So as a result we have really just a slight heating and formation of a shallow mixed layer and formation of a thermocline in the summer in polar latitudes. So comparing that back with temperate latitudes we have this more stepwise process in temperate latitudes. In polar latitudes, we have this process where it's really only happening in the summertime where we have this stratification. And it's weak stratification at that. But again, very important for the seasonal cycle in polar latitudes. Now, if we look at tropical latitudes, what we see is endless summer. We always have a shallow mixed layer. We always have a thermocline because even though this figure is incorrect, it should show sunlight through the entire year. So take note of that in figure 725, this should show sunlight through the entire year. And I may have messed it up for my slide here. In any case, the water temperatures are always warm in the summertime. And we always have a shallow mixed layer and we always have a thermocline at tropical latitudes. So if we compare what is the normal situation for tropical latitudes throughout the year, what we see is it looks a lot like summertime at temperate latitudes. And if we look at polar situation, and this isn't as good of a figure as it should be because this should actually also come, uh, there should be a little bit more definition here between the uh, warmer waters, surface waters, and the colder waters in summer in polar latitudes, but this should look more like spring. So we see the different latitudes of polar, temperate, and tropical oceans resembling each other at different times of year. And we want to kind of keep that in mind because the kinds of productivity and when we see the, these particular regions become productive will depend again on stratification of the water column, but they'll resemble each other in certain ways. Uh, or resemble each other um, in because of the physical nature of the water column. To summarize then, we see differences in the mixed layer depth that are caused by seasonal changes in heating in the three different regions of the world ocean, the temperate zone, the tropical zone, and the polar zones. And it's those changes in mixed layer depth that occur as a result of seasonal heating and cooling that really are going to be responsible for the kinds of productivity that we see in these different types of oceans. In fact, it determines even the color of the oceans that we see. 
when you think of Hawaii, you often think of very clear blue waters, which you think of when you think of most tropical regions. We'll understand why that happens in a bit when we study productivity in the ocean. And in our temperate ocean here in California, and in other temperate oceans as well, you generally have a greening of the waters in spring and summer and a bluing of the waters. You have your clearest waters, best diving in fact, in the fall and summer. And it's these changes in the mixed layer depth, the changes in the seasonal cycle, and the changes in latitude that are going to all work together to determine the physical structure of the ocean and ultimately its productivity, its ability to produce oxygen, and how it keeps us warm. All those things combined.